Um, can we just open up in prayer this morning? Can you hear me? You can't? Okay. They said they can't hear me. Let's see. Is that better, Mother? All right. We got it. Okay, so let's go ahead and bow our heads as we begin to open up in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we just want to thank you for the breath in our bodies on today, on tonight, oh God. We want to thank you for another opportunity to fellowship with the body of believers and to grow closer to you in your word, oh God. We just want to thank you for another opportunity to be Christians and to be saved, oh God. We ask that you just begin to open up our hearts and our minds on this evening, oh God. I know that people have been coming from work and from other areas, oh God. And so we just ask that you settle our spirits right now, oh God, and that you just help us to be able to have an open mind this evening and that we will begin to just relax and sit back and just listen to what it is that you have to tell us this evening, oh God. We ask that your Holy Spirit come in this place on this evening, oh God. We know that we can't do anything without you. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you guys, I'm so happy to see you on this evening. Um, I was out of town last week, so I did miss you guys. And I miss Minister Levine um, being able to come in and teach the word. But I am back, and I'm so happy to be here on this evening with you guys. So first, we're going to go ahead. Um, I am... Um, I just want to welcome everyone, some of our viewers online and someone that may be here new to Grace. I just want to welcome you guys to the Grace Gospel Bible Study this evening, and I'm just so happy to see you guys here. I am Lakeisha, um, Lakeisha Gladden, and I am just ecstatic and excited about teaching and having a Bible study with you guys on tonight. Last week, you guys discussed the scholars visiting baby Jesus. And you guys came out of Matthew 2, 1 through 23, as well as Luke 2 and 40. Um, some of the things that you guys discussed was an angel informing Joseph about Mary being pregnant and that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Um, you guys went on to discuss that. And then... You also discussed how the wise scholars came from the east and that they arrived in Jerusalem. And they asked the question, where's the baby who was born to the king? King Herod heard about this new king of the Jews, and he was very disturbed. So that's one of the things that you guys discussed on last week. And then you guys also discussed how the child um, Jesus grew. He became stronger. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. So that was some of the things that you guys discussed last week. Moving forward this week, we will be discussing how John the Baptist prepared the way. All right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open up, open up your Bibles if you have them, and we're gonna to turn to Matthew chapter three. And we will be reading Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, as well as Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. When you have it, please say amen. 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 And so at this time, can I get someone um, to volunteer to read some of these scriptures? Do we have the microphones? Um, Okay, so do we have a volunteer? Okay, mother would like to read. Could you read uh, Matthew 3, 1 through 12? And then who wants to read Luke 3, 1 through? And my brother right here wants to read Luke. So we'll start with mother over here. Thank you. Um, one moment. He's going to bring the mic so that everyone can hear you. Oh, they're going to hear you. <laughs> well, hallelujah. <laughs> One, two, two, and say it. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's four seventeen. For this is he who was who has spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice 
of the one crying in the wilderness. That's Isaiah 40 and 3. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his passes straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. That's Leviticus 11, 22. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him. That's Mark 1, 5. And was baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Boo, vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Mark 1 and 4. And do not think to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise raise up children to Abraham from these stones. John 8, 33, 44. And even now the ox is laid to the roof of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. 7, chapter 7, 17 to 20. Psalms 92, 12 to 14. I indeed baptize you with the water unto repentance, but he who's listen at this, but he who's coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and the fire. Acts 2, 3, at four. His whining wing fan is in his hand and his will, thoroughly cleaning out his thrashing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenching fire. That's thirteen thirty in Hebrew 12 and 29. Amen. Thank you so much for that. And now if we could get um, my brother here to read Luke 3, 1 through 14. Chaplain. Okay. Oh, he has one. Okay. okay. John the Baptist prepares the way, 3-1. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of the Judea, Herod, <coughs> Antipas. Harold, uh, Tetris of Galilee, his brother, Philip, he trapped uh, and Tronites and the Sinians, Tetris of Abilene, joined the high priesthood of Annas and Cal Calpas. The word of God came to John's son, Lapidus, the word of God came to John's son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching baptizing, baptism and repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. A voice of one calling in the wilderness prepares the way for the Lord, makes straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every 
mountain and hill may grow. The crook road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brought a viper who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For, for I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is, the axe is already up children and Abraham, for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with one who has none. And, among, and, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? Amen. Thank you so much, both of you, for reading those scriptures on the on tonight. Oh no, it was um, chapter three, one through fourteen. You just stopped at fourteen, right? Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so the key person for this evening that we will be discussing, of course, is John the Baptist. Just to give you an idea of where the location is, we know that it's at the Jordan River. Some of the key repetitions that we'll be discussing this evening that you guys will all hear and read about are the baptism, including baptizing and being baptized. Um, that's going to be out of Matthew 3 and 6, um, Luke 3 and 3, and some of the other scriptures. And you guys have this in your um, packet. I'm just giving you a brief um, idea of what we're going to be discussing on tonight. Um, we're also going to be talking about the tax collectors, which we just heard read in Luke. Um, we're going to be discussing repentance, which John is big on repentance. Um, he preached to repent for the kingdom of God, um, the kingdom of heaven, is near. We're going to talk about people confessing their sins. We're also going to discuss John called for the people to produce fruit that showed that they had truly repented. We will also discuss John baptizing the people to show that they had repented. Lastly, we'll discuss the promises of the one coming. Isaiah described John the Baptist as one who prepared the way for the Lord's arrival. So those are some of the topics that we will be discussing this evening. Those are going to be key repetitions. We will hear a lot of that as we go over these scriptures on tonight. Some of the key attitudes that we'll be discussing are the harshness of John the Baptist preaching, his style, how people received him. Um, we'll also discuss the um, listeners, their desire to know how to truly repent. We'll also discuss John the Baptist's ad admiration for the one who is to come, which we know is Jesus. So the initial situation. The Bible is silent about Jesus' life after his childhood until he was about 12 years old. At that time, at the end of the trip to Jerusalem, Jesus stayed behind in the temple without his parents' knowledge. From the time Jesus was 12 until he was 30 years old, 
The Bible doesn't narrate facts about his life. So we don't know everything that was going on, but they give us what we need to know. During those years, Jesus lived in the town of Nazareth, and he worked as a carpenter, and he was known outside of the hometown. Our initial problem this evening will be John, son of Zechariah. He received a message from God, and he went into all the country around the Jordan River, preaching, repentance, and baptizing. Our final situation will be John the Baptist proclaimed that the main character in the drama comes after him and is greater than he, which we know is Jesus. The one who comes after will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So, if I could get some of you guys to volunteer reading the Bible st story, that would be awesome. And maybe two people that hadn't already um, read the scriptures before, if we could get someone or several of you to maybe volunteer just to read part of the Bible story. Yeah, so if you could maybe take a paragraph um, or, to, you know, or to just have you feel, okay? And whoever's next, just pick up where she leaves off, okay? Jesus was about 30 years old. That was the time when God spake to John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah, who was living in the desert country of Judea. John went into all the country around Jordan River Valley, preaching and baptizing. John preached, repent, turn back to God, for the kingdom of heaven will soon be here. Isaiah the prophet spoke about John the Baptist when he said, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare for the Lord's arrival, make the road smooth and straight. Matthew 3, 1 through 3, and Luke 3, 1 through 6. All right. John the Baptist's <clears throat> clothes were made from camel's hair. He wore a leather belt around, the, around his waist. His food was grasshoppers and wild honey. People went out to John the Baptist from Jerusalem, Judea, and the countryside around the Jordan River. They confessed their sins and were baptized by John in the Jordan River. Matthew 3, 4 through 6. John the Baptist told the crowds coming out to be baptized, you are poisonous snakes. Who warned you to turn from the coming judgment? Produce fruits that show that you have repented and given up your sins. The crowd asked John, what should we do then? John answered, if you have two coats, give one away to the person who has none. If you have food, share that too. John told the tax collectors who came to be baptized, don't make people pay higher taxes than the law requires. John told the soldiers who came to be baptized, don't force people to give you money in exchange for you leaving them alone. Don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Luke chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. Okay. Do we have another that would? Okay, go ahead. John told the Pharisees and Sadducees, religious leaders, who came to where he was baptizing, you bunch of snakes, who warned you to flee from the coming judgment? Produce fruit that shows that you have repented and given up your sins. Don't say it to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that God could make children for Abraham from these stones. The ax is already at the root of the trees. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew 3, 7 through 10. Amen. John proclaimed to all, I baptize you with the water to show that you have repented and given up your sins. But the main character in the drama comes after me. He is greater than I am. I am not good enough to carry his sandals. 
He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winering forks is his hand to clear his threshing floor, threshing floor, and the sep and to separate the good wheat from the husk. He'll store the wheat in the barn and burn up the husk with a fire that can not be put out. Matthew three eleven through twelve. Amen. Thank you guys for that reading. So let's jump into our discussion for this evening. First, let's talk about what catches your attention in this story. As we think over the Bible story that they just read, let's think about what, what catches your attention. The microphone. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, if we're looking at this, we see that there is a character that is unusual compared to the world around him. Mm -hmm. it, it describes how, what he wears and what he eats, which is the reason I think they lay that out to show that this is not a person that, is, 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 that you would commonly see in the community where he lives. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's identifying John the Baptist. Yeah. If we... If we if we get a little bit about John the Baptist, we know that he was excited about the birth of Jesus even before Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just... I'm, 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 okay. I'm, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Mother? He was excited. He did not want to give himself credit. He would not boastful at all like we will. I always say the big head, but anyway... He didn't boast about it. He was mm -hmm. very calm about it, but he let them know that the person uh, who's coming, I am not even fit to even wear the sandals or hold the sandals. Mm -hmm. I am just John. And the one that's coming is much more greater than mm -hmm. I am. All right. Um, I'm sorry, right here. What appears to me is that John came with a message that wasn't being preached at the time. Mm -hmm. John was direct with the people. He told them that they need to repent for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. This was a message, a message that had not been preached for a while since, the, uh, since the Levites and the priests of God were not actually active at this time, in that time prior to John coming here. So John gave, the, gave people something to remember, to reflect on about the character of God and what God requires of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Did anyone else want to add? Ma'am, one second. You got a mic? Okay. Uh, the last sentence really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. It says, he'll store the wheat in the barn and burn up the husks with a fire that can't be put out. Just those words alone would make me stop and wonder now, what kind of fire can't be put out? Mm. And um, who is going to burn something that can't be put out? Mm. So that alone would make me wonder. Okay. Did anyone else feel like that? is what we think about ourselves sometimes. Look, when Jesus was baptized, he was, what, 30 years old? So then it gave, hey, I don't have to be baptized right away, but if there's an individual that baptized him, why not? Because I believe, and if I believe in the Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. then I realize that this is what I need to do, is to be baptized. Otherwise, I am not ready to be baptized. And uh, sometimes we think about it. If I'm not baptized right away, then I'm not a good Christian. Hmm. Did you guys hear what the mother said? Has anyone else felt like that or heard that before? 
Can you repeat that last line that you said, Mother? So how do, can we just talk about that for just a moment? Does anyone, how do you guys feel about that statement that she made? Because I know I've been at a church before and there was someone that was maybe 80 or 90 years old that that was their first time ever being baptized. Um, and as a 41 year old, I always thought as a, you know, I got baptized at five. So I always thought that people got baptized, you know, early in life. And that was just something that you did. But we, you know, at a duty station that we were at, there were tons of people that had never been baptized before. They didn't know what it was to be baptized. And me being from the Bible Belt, I was like, it was on, it was just very shocking to me because I just made that assumption that everyone goes to church and everyone gets baptized. So how do you guys feel about that? That, you know, they still feel that they can believe, but they didn't feel like they needed to get baptized. So bap um, baptism isn't uh, mandatory for salvation. Mm -hmm. So it is, um, and the water doesn't save you. So being dunked in the water, mm -hmm. it, it's an outward statement to the world that um, you have changed. Your life has been changed uh, by God. And so if you are on your deathbed and have never been baptized, mm -hmm. that doesn't prevent you from getting into heaven. Amen. You can still confess. You can repent mm -hmm. like John was teaching and preaching. You can confess with your heart. Uh, with your mouth and believe in your heart that uh, Jesus is Lord and you are saved and, and you, are, you can enter in. So it's, um, I think it's a personal thing to get baptized, mm -hmm. but it's also an outward thing to let the world know that your life has been changed. Amen. And I just wanted to gauge you guys. I'm, I, I didn't say that that was a right or wrong, but I just wanted to open that up for discussion. Okay. If Thank I, you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> if I may. Uh-huh. When we consider baptism, uh, uh, I think the, in my personal opinion is, is that un unless there is the recognition of sin and the need to repent for sin mm -hmm. and the need to ask for forgiveness, then unless you have come to that place in, in, in your understanding, then baptism, the, the, the going in the water, is, is not effective, in, in my opinion. Hmm. Because the whole process, if I understand it correctly, is first recognizing that there is a need for forgiveness of sin. Right. And the first recognize that there's a need for repentance. And with that, and, and, and with that then a, a, a process began. Because until you, in my opinion, get to that place, I mean, people get in water all the time. Yeah, that's true. So, does anyone have any feedback on that? Or you have any? Okay, Chaplain in the back. <laughs> One moment, we'll get the mic to you so we can hear you. Well, I think uh, we, we need to be there's a very fine line that we need to work on when we're discussing this because mm -hmm. I think uh, the Bible also talks about presumptuous sin, mm -hmm. something that you notice. The Bible says do this, but you say, well, I'm not going to do it because I don't feel like it. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. Whenever you become a Christian, you waive your right. Like me right here right now, I used to live in Minneapolis, a big old city. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm living in a small town where barely got a red light because that's what the army wants. So I have to do it, mm -hmm. you know. So when we come to God, we waive our rights mm -hmm. at the way we feel. You know, what we want is no longer, it does not matter. Today you don't hear that, but that's what it is. When you become a Christian, you say, I surrender all to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says that you have to get baptized. Mm -hmm. So that means that you have to go through the watery grave in order to be qualified to go to heaven. Now, there's a caveat there. 
Jesus is saying that that's the only way you go to heaven because the thief on the cross did not get baptized. But that was, it's, that was a, how do you call it, exception to the rules is not the rule. Mm -hmm. So exception to the rules, and like your sister said, if you're on your dead bed, we're not going to drag you from your dead bed to put you in the water. Mm -hmm. No, that's exception. But if I know it's right, then I must do it. Mm -hmm. I should not say, well, I know it's right, but I'm not going to do it anyway because I don't feel like it. That's that disobedient. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. with mm -hmm. God and this is this is one of those things that I am getting from being baptized thinking mm -hmm. thank you so much mm -hmm. amen well thank you thank you guys Did anyone else have anything before we move on to the next question well we have to remember with water baptism it is an ordinance which means that it is a command okay which is so, what yeah. he so, was saying mm -hmm. yeah so I'm just kind of co-signing with my brother <laughs> over here with water because you know, just because we feel that we don't want to be baptized, it has nothing to do with your feelings. Mm -hmm. It has everything to do with what God commanded. You know what I mean? So when you, you know, we know that salvation begins and ends with Jesus Christ. We know mm -hmm. that, right? Amen. But then Jesus also says that you must be baptized. Jesus got baptized. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Amen. So we got to remember those things. And that, I'm going to just... That's Amen. It. Thank you all for sharing. Okay. Was there a question? I'm sorry. No? Okay. Sir? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, John said to the crowd that I will baptize you with water, but there's one who's coming after me mm -hmm. who will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with power, I believe. You know, so we ask, I ask myself, I know that water baptism is a requirement, mm -hmm. but which is greater, the Holy Spirit or the water? Please, someone help me. He knows the Holy I, Spirit. Yeah. Well, I, Amen. 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 I just want to open that door so you can come through it. That's all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. We'll have one more and then we'll move yeah, on to the next. Right here. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, like the, uh, the, the thief on the cross with him, he didn't have no water baptism. And uh, the thing I noticed is that he surrendered you know, from from his life mm -hmm. and the old life that he was living and confessed just to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told him, I have a place for you in heaven, mm -hmm. a room for you. Mm -hmm. So that just tells me uh, if, if 
I'm able to get in the water to be baptized, it's fine. But if I'm not in, in uh, if I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I can't go nowhere or I'm a paralegic or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. you know, you got to look at this too, that I can still be saved by confessing my sins and surrendering from my heart. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. all I got. I want yeah, to say. and I think that's what we all got from that, that if you're willing and able to be baptized, that it is a command. However, if you are bedridden or you are not able to be physically um, put into the water and coming up, then that is fine too because you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we have one more and then we're going to move on. Thank you guys. Amen. I just wanted to um, also put a pin in the fact that the water baptism is a cleansing, it's a purification, it's also an admission, that's why I said an outward uh, admission uh, to being in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a cleansing, and I like what the chaplain said, that you, know, you, you die in sin mm -hmm. when you go under the water, but you rise, you rise yes. to, to cleanse mm -hmm. and to be purified in, in, a, in a changed life, in a changed life. But we're also admitting who we are now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been grafted in and adopted in uh, to be a child of the king. Amen. Thank you guys for that feedback. That was awesome. All right, let's go ahead to the next question. Um, it was, is there anything in the story that is hard to understand? And it seems like we all kind of helped each other with that. We got a good understanding of that. Okay, so let's move on. The next one is, who are the main characters in the story? Which we know that is John the Baptist. Um, so we can move on. What problems did the characters face? Can I hear some of the problems that the characters face? I think John had to face um, disbelief, ridicule mm -hmm. from um, the 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 non-believers, and um, he had to face doubt from the non-believers and. Um, so that's what I believe. Okay. Did anyone else have? Um, what problems did the characters face? Well, one of the things that I saw was that um, there was a wilderness experience. Up to this point, there was a wilderness experience. Um, let me pull it up so that we can see what I'm talking about. Let me pull it up for you guys. While I'm looking for it, did anyone else have anything um, that they saw in the story? Yeah, I think I also, uh, every time I read this story, I mm -hmm. wonder uh, uh, why did John the Baptist uh, rebuke the people mm -hmm. when they yield to his preaching? All right, you preach and then people come out to get saved and you say, who told you to come get saved? You <laughs> know, <saying>? that <laughs> was a contradiction. I don't know why mm -hmm. he said that, but. Apparently, he wanted them to stay, to not come to repent so they can be destroyed. But unfortunately, I mean, fortunately mm -hmm. for the people, they heed their, their call and they came to get baptized. I think that was, uh, that was a unique twist in the, the story. Yeah. Yeah. So I did find what I was looking for. It's in chapter 3, and it's verse 4. It says, Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. Um, I just wanted to really think about that wilderness situation, and we know, do we know what it is to be in a wilderness situation? So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper of what a wilderness is. We know they were in the wilderness for 40 years, but some of the things that stood out to me was intense experiences. They had a need for food and water. There was isolation. They were living in lack, discomfort. Some of them were barren, 
non-fruitful. So that really stood out to me because a lot of those things, when you think of a wilderness, you don't really think about that. But when you really dig deep into that, we've all probably had some of those feelings of being in a wilderness experience. And this is, you know, him coming to them. So some of them, they were non-fruitful. I've been non-fruitful in my life. I'm sure all of us have. I've had discomfort. There's been living in lack. And so I wanted to know and kind of feel what the people were feeling prior to him coming to preach what he was saying to them. Where was their mindset? What type of lifestyle were they living at that time? And at that time, they were in the wilderness when he came. So did anyone else have anything they wanted to add to that? Well, it also, you know, what he had on, what he was eating and what he was wearing, how yeah. his hair was, mm -hmm. how, you know, all of those things, you know, caused them to come out there as well. Mm -hmm. Because even that was prophetic in a sense because mm -hmm. Those garments were like the same garments that Elijah wore mm -hmm. you know, in the Old Testament. So that drew them out there to the wilderness to hear this message that mm -hmm. they didn't even know. In my, in my opinion, they didn't even know they was going to receive a message like this. Mm -hmm. But it was impactful. Yeah. Amen. All right. Anyone else have anything on that particular question? Yeah. All right. Can I, can I add oh, I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you look at the life of John the Baptist. He was very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, the brother talked about the kind of food that he was eating, the kind of clothing that he had on. Mm -hmm. um, he knew what God wanted him to do, and he stayed with that. He didn't try to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, he preached the message that God gave him. Mm -hmm. um, his, his ministry didn't last very long. Okay. Sometimes people think that Longevity is the answer when mm -hmm. not really. He, he, his ministry lasted probably maybe six months. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that was it. But he did what God called him to mm -hmm. do. He was impactful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is very, very significant. Um, we find a lot of people in church today um, going to church for several reasons. Mm -hmm. Some people are in ministry for several reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, some people go to church to fight. Um, they are jealous of somebody else's mm -hmm. gift. Um, they wish they were somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they, um, uh, there's just so much jealousy and envy going on. Mm -hmm. And they are not fulfilling what God called them to do. Amen. So um, looking at the life of John, it is mm -hmm. so beautiful to see how he was unique. He stayed with his call. And he did what God called him to do, even though his ministry was not very long. Amen. That's good to know that he was obedient. We keep going back to that, he, that obedience. <laughs> okay, so how did the characters face their problems? Could you guys give me maybe one or two ways that you saw in the story um, how they faced their problems? Go ahead, sir. I like when the, when the crowd asked John, it says, um, what must we do to be baptized? And what must we do if we have clothes? And John gave them specific instructions mm -hmm. regarding material things that may have bind them to this world. He said, if you have two coats, give one away. If you have abundance of food, share it with other people, you know? He was giving them the same example that, that the prophets were trying to tell them all the way. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't hoard things. You know, only God has a storehouse that's built up where things aren't going to decay, where rats and rust is not going to mess with mm -hmm. it. Everything else that we have and we store up is just going to be getting moss and Amen. fall apart. So that was a great instruction for people who are hoarding or trying to hold on to things this world. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to just that me, me, me mentality you have to let go of what you want and become a servant and to be able to share just give it all pour it out because it all belongs to him anyway it's sort of like the tithe which we're not going to get on that but it all belongs to him anyway so he's like if you don't give it to me I'm going to take it so why are we holding on to it so that that was awesome that you said that did anyone else have anything to say Jessalyn? Go on with that. Um, 
when you get baptized and get saved, your life should be changed mm -hmm. and not be the same way you were before. Like he was telling the tax collectors, don't charge them more than they should do. You sh your life should be changed, should mm -hmm. show that you've yeah. been changed. And that's why we get baptized, because God commands, like the man saying, we have to show the world that we accepted the Lord, our Lord and Savior. We've been born again. And that's a way of showing, you know, going to water baptism mm -hmm. so we can show that we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we have to have a life that's changed, not be the same as before and be selfish. Oh, I want more. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. you got to show love and compassion towards people. That's change. Amen. That's so change. showing change, a big part of change is showing love and compassion to all, to everyone. Not just your selected people that you like or people that may, you know, um, meet your agenda, but to all God's people. Amen. So next we're going to go to, have any of you in here faced a similar problem? Or some of the similar problems? I know we have. If someone would like to share, uh, maybe someone that hasn't spoken today. Did you, have you ever faced a, a similar problem that they were facing? Yeah, well, um, I've, uh, I've been doing like evangelism work outside, you know, mm -hmm. outside the church. Mm -hmm. What happened to me one time was that this fella was uh, in, a, in, a, in a drug game and um, he was sitting down by a restaurant in front and his wife and baby was in the um the cafeteria and so the holy spirit told me go over there and talk to him mm -hmm. i was in my truck and so i got out i went over there and i started talking to him i said uh the lord one god wanted me to tell you you need to go back to church and uh he said you know uh I need to because my wife and baby go to church, you mm -hmm. know. And then make long story short, he was, he was a gangbanger and all that stuff. But the thing was, the Holy Spirit told me to do that. And uh, sometimes people, you can go to people and they have a rebellious attitude mm -hmm. or a rebellious spirit. And um, so I prayed for him, prayed with him and everything like that. And so, you know... Um, I told him my testimony, you mm -hmm. know. I shared what my testimony was because he shared his. That's and awesome. uh, I know mm -hmm. that God was, you know, in control of everything. You so know? you felt led by the Holy Spirit yeah. to evangelize and show someone um, and tell them what God had told you to tell them. And that's the work that we're so, supposed to do as believers is to make sure that we are um, being... So that's part of what it's all about. I'm sorry? To tell the truth, we kind of in that situation now with mm -hmm. the vaccine. Mm -hmm. You know? Amen. So that is one of the things that in life right now that we probably go through because we have people that are saying, oh, no, I'm not going to take it. And then we want to know why. And then we start asking questions, and they're going to try to erase everything because they think it's the best thing that they can do is not to take them. Mm -hmm. But yet and still, yes, this is kind of the day today's life. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing that. So we have some more questions that I want to jump into. Um, we have a little bit more time. This is good. Um, so let's describe John the Baptist. while you guys are thinking about that, one of the things as I was studying this, I saw John the Baptist, he is the forerunner and the baptizer of Jesus. He was a crying voice in the wilderness that prepared the way for Jesus. He was the link between the old and the new Testament. 
and that's Matthew 11 and 12 and Luke 16 and 16. So did anyone else see him as something else besides some of those things that I mentioned? A forerunner, the link between the old and the new, a voice, a crying voice in the wilderness. Did anyone else see him as something else? Go ahead, sir. Well, I think when we look at John's life, uh, it speaks a volume because some of us, like uh, 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 Chaplin said, we, we look at other people's ministry, right? And mm -hmm. we envy that. We want to be like them, mm -hmm. you know. But sometimes God may call us to just be a supporter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, even in the family, there are mm -hmm. some family where the husband supports the wife. Mm -hmm. That's all you were called to do, to support your wife. And she has a career that is out there. Mm -hmm. You are just there to support her or vice versa. But uh, sometimes we get offended. Oh, no, I had to be the one out there. That's my time. I got to do that. John the Baptist only supports Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment Jesus, he introduced Jesus, Jesus to the world, he vanished. Mm -hmm. His ministry was completely gone, you know. And you see that trend in, ministry, in, in the Old Testament. Like Isaac, mm -hmm. Isaac, his bread was a big deal. But he mm -hmm. did not do much in the Bible mm -hmm. besides breathing Jacob. And then Jacob went on to get two children, and they began... But his was just to birth that child, and, you know. So sometimes we have to look at our lives and our ministry. What is God calling me to do? Mm -hmm. Is he just calling me to support another pastor or to support my wife or my children? What is he calling me? You know, make it clear to me, Lord. You know, I think that's a good observation. And that's awesome that you say that because there is no small job in the kingdom of God. They're all significant. They're all important. Important down to cleaning out the bathroom, that's still ministry. Yeah. Singing in the choir, that's ministry. Cleaning up the, the, the sanctuary, that's ministry. So we need to, like you said, um, just be thankful that he's using us in whatever capacity that he's using us in. Because it's all for his glory. It's all for his glory. And in doing those small things, and I see you, Sister Donna, um, in doing those small things, it will open up the door and will open up opportunity for God to elevate you. But you have to be a good steward mm -hmm. at what he's given you and where you're at at that time mm -hmm. so that he can begin to do some other things for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And you just touched on it, sis, when you said that he was a good steward. John was straightforward thinking. He didn't sway to the right or mm -hmm. to the left. Mm -hmm. He was mission oriented. There were no scandals around him. There was no wife, no ex-wife, no kids, and all <laughs> that other stuff. He stayed straight on the path mm -hmm. until the very end. Amen. Amen. So with us knowing that sometimes you may not be in the front, you can still be a forerunner and not be in the front. You can still lead from the back, actually. You don't have to be in the front to lead. You don't have to be the person that has the highest position in order to lead. God will still anoint you and give you the power that you need to be able to do what you need to do. So my question to you guys, do we want to be like John the Baptist and be a forerunner for Jesus? in whatever capacity, in whatever position that he's given us? Are we prepared to do that? Amen. 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 Next question. Um, what did John the Baptist preach? Repentance. We don't like that word. We don't like to repent. Or is it, we like to repent, we just don't like to turn. That complete turning part, that's what gets us. We'll say, oh, Please forgive me for doing this, and then we'll turn back around and do the same thing to our brother or sister. That, that part of the repentance is something we don't like, the turning part. Go ahead, sir. I don't think it's the turning part that's difficult. I think it's the letting go that holds people down. Okay. It's kind of like the millstone that Christ talked about when he says you tie the millstone around your neck and you jump into the river. Mm -hmm. Now, you have an option of letting that millstone go. That's true. Mm-hmm. But if that millstone rings envy, jealousy, mm -hmm. bitterness, unforgiveness, mm -hmm. that's what sinks you. Yes. All right, Sister Donna, and then I'm a, I got something I'm going to say to that. Okay, go ahead. It's, it's strongholds. Okay. Because some things you can let go of and that you never be bothered with them again. But mm -hmm. some of those strongholds, that's why they're called strongholds. Amen. Those are the ones that you keep circling back around and touching <laughs> on again and then again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So, John, he preached end-time prophecy. He demanded 
immediate action. Get right now. It was no, oh, you have time. You, he, you need to get right now. Repent <laughs> now, <laughs> today, right now. <laughs> and so he taught that judgment is at hand. Do we, do we teach that or do we say that? Do we have those expectations? Those same expectations? Go ahead. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, it's good that you mentioned that. Uh, today, the church is so touchy, you know. Mm -hmm. People are so thin skinned. Pastors and I, they, we struggle to preach, you know. We don't want to offend. We don't want to offend people mm -hmm. because everything you say, somebody will get offended. Mm -hmm. But John the Baptist was not afraid to be, <laughs> to be offensive, if that's the yeah. word, you know. And like the sister said, he was straightforward. He did not care how you feel about mm -hmm. it. God gave him the message. You know, I think it is about time if we're going to preach the end time message mm -hmm. for us to be real to ourselves and to our, our audience, our church and brothers and sisters. Because mm -hmm. if God wants you to speak the truth, speak the truth. Mm -hmm. And what if people, if you lose your job, you lose your job. God got the, he has a place for you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we love the job so much yeah. that we'd rather have the job mm -hmm. than do our job. Yeah. You know. We want to please the crowd. We want people to like us. We want to have friends. We don't want to offend anyone. But are you going to be offensive to your brother and sister in love? Or, you know, sometimes it requires that. Sometimes it does, but we need to do it in love. Right. You know, we want to do it in love. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. But if God is giving you a word and it's in his word, and His, you have to be obedient. It goes back to being obedient. To what God is saying. Now that, that doesn't mean you just, I'm going to give a person a piece of my mind. I'm just going to say whatever I want to say. It really needs to be from God. But what, what people don't understand about the Bible is that you don't really have to set out to be offensive when you preach the gospel. Yeah. You can just preach the text and it's going to offend someone yeah. because the gospel is, the, the word of God is supposed to be offensive. It, it, is, it is designed for you to be cut in a way that mm -hmm. it produces change. Mm -hmm. So I can just preach the Bible. Don't put any of my opinions in it, where, nowhere, no matter where it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to still have to tell you that I'm not being subliminal. Because <laughs> yeah. I do it. I, I'm not being subliminal. Mm -hmm. This is just the text. Yes. And, you know, as sheep, right, we're going we're gonna to be dealt with in a way that's going to cause us to move in a certain direction. And sometimes that prodding is painful. Amen. I don't have to do anything extra. The, the word of God is going to do it. Amen. So who were some of the groups who went to John? And what did he tell each group? And we've kind of already touched on it, but if someone wanted to add to that, what was one of the things that he told one of the groups? Sir, right here. Oh. If I may, mm -hmm. the, 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 he mentions that there are Sadducees and Pharisees, mm -hmm. and if we, we we know a little bit about them, we know that those were people who liked to hold up the word, but didn't want to practice what the word says. Mm -hmm. And so John identifies them right away as people who are holding it up and walking around with the Bibles and the scrolls under the, but they're not living in accordance with the word, and that's why he called them what he called them. As, as he was just saying now, we really don't have to set out to do anything because offensive. As natural people living in the world and conditioned, born in sin, these words in the Bible are going to offend if you're not practicing what's written. Amen. Amen. And, and so you don't even have to go to try and do that at all. Mm -hmm. You just try and practice what the word says or preach what the word says and practice what the word says and that automatically offensive because the natural man is not trying to do mm. these things. That, that is why we, anyway. Yes. Here we go. Well, thank you. Did you, did you want to? Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So how did John want people to prove that they had repented? To show love and to share what they had. So he said if they had two coats, share the coat. If they had food, to share food. 
Okay. And then also in the scripture, it said in chapter three, verse eight, prove it by the way that you live. Mm -hmm. Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Right? And that's his word. So that's one of the ways that we show. What I put in my notes is, it requires total reorientation from pride, sin, it requires for us to humble ourselves and to be obedient. And that's Jeremiah 3, 11 through 22. Can we turn to that real quick? Because I wanted to read that really quickly. Jeremiah 3, 11 through 22. And I was reading this. I was like, wow, this just kind of puts it out there for us. No questions asked. All right, 11 through 22. Jeremiah 3, 11 through 22 reads. That's, that's why even the spring rains have failed. Wait a minute, let me make sure I'm reading the right thing. I'm sorry, 3, 11 through 22. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. It says, then the, word, then the Lord said to me, even faithless Israel is less guilty from treacherous Judah. Therefore, go and give this message to Israel. This is what the Lord says. O Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. Admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God and committed adultery against him by worshiping idols under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my voice. I, the Lord, have spoken. Return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, one from this town and two from that family, from wherever you are scattered. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. And when your land is once more filled with people, says the Lord, you will no longer wish for the good old days when you possess the ark of the Lord's covenant. You will not miss those days or even remember them. And there will be no need to rebuild the ark. In that day, Jerusalem will be known as the throne of the Lord. All nations will come there to honor the Lord. They will no longer stubbornly follow their own evil desires. In those days, the people of Judah and Israel will return together from exile in the north. They will return to the land I gave their ancestors as an inheritance forever. I thought to myself, I would love to treat you as my own children. I wanted nothing more than to give you this beautiful land, the finest possession in the world. And so it goes on to talk about that. But the, the key part that I wanted us to see is that, that repentance, how important it is to repent. And in my notes I put, God wants to heal the land. He wants to heal us again. There is a message of restoration in this. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is something that you guys can read on your own time because we're pressed for time. But it speaks on God healing the land. After we were disobedient, after we did the things that we've done, God wants to restore us. Restoration is a big part of this Bible study. Um, reconciliation and restoration, repentance and salvation. Um, what was the mission of John the Baptist? Really quickly. The forerunner of Christ to pave the way. Yes, ma'am. In 
And lastly, how can we be similar to John the Baptist and prepare others to meet Jesus? And we'll leave with that. Let's think about that. How can we be similar to John the Baptist and prepare others to meet Jesus? All right, sir. I believe we have to have a certain amount of boldness about us, mm -hmm. but that boldness must be grounded in love. Mm -hmm. And the love must be coming from the word of God. So if we are bolded and grounded and obedient, and we can share this word of God, then we can be just as John was. Amen. Sister? Our actions, our day-to-day -day living should, should reflect what we're professing out of our mouth. Amen. Well, that is just awesome. I want to thank you guys for participating this evening. We had an awesome discussion. If we could just stand and close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spirit, your Holy Spirit, oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to be baptized, oh God, to be baptized by water and also by your Holy Spirit, oh God. We thank you for the opportunity to be bold in your word, oh God, and to be rooted and grounded in your love, oh God, so that men could see that we have changed, oh God, so that people will be able to see who you are, oh God, which is love, oh God. Let us be Christ's representatives, oh God, in everything that we do each and every day, oh God, on our jobs, in our families, oh God, in our schools, wherever we are, oh God. Let us represent you and represent you well, oh God. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it is the blueprint for life, oh God, that we never have to wonder what we should do or what we should say or how we should live, oh God, but that it's all there, right there, ready for us. All we have to do is just open up your word, oh God, to get to know whatever it is that you would have for us to do in our lives, oh God. We thank you for that opportunity. We thank you that we have Bibles that we can open up, oh God, because there's someone somewhere in this world, oh God, that they can't have Bibles. They can't read your word, oh God. So we thank you for that. We don't take that likely, oh God, that we have that opportunity. We ask you to draw us nearer to you daily, oh God. Draw us nearer to your love, oh God. Fill us up, oh God, so that we can continue to pour out, oh God. Help us not to hold on to it, but everything that you give us, oh God, that we just empty ourselves out daily, daily, oh God, whatever that you give us, whether it be your word, your love, oh God, your zeal and your passion, oh God, whatever it is, our money, our homes, our food, our clothes, help us not to hold on to the things that you've given us to be a blessing, oh God. We just ask for more of you on tonight, oh God. More of you, oh God. And as you give us more of you, less of us, oh God. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen.